welcome to another Foxtrot visuals video. In this video, I will briefly go over how I made one of my biggest projects ever, with over 340 layers in total. After watching I Am Legend for the first time in many years, all the movie's post-apocalyptic visuals and imagery inspired me to make one of my own, applying a few techniques I just recently learned. Using all of these assets, they are 73 in total, if I'm not mistaken, I turn this into this into this. This photo took me around 8 hours to complete and choosing the assets alone took me another hour. It was a long one. So as always, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you do, give it a thumbs up. That would make me very happy. Thank you. To begin with, I had to remove these people from the sidewalks and the cars and the bikers and stuff like that by using basically a combination of the clone stamp tool and the content aware fails. And then I wanted the road to look old and dirty so I used this gravel road as an overlay and basically I just made it fit to the original road. And then I duplicated it and I placed it further up the road to make it, you know, extend into the distance basically. For this photo I didn't need the background so with a simple pen tool I just removed the background from the arches and then I masked out the road from the pillars and then I removed the upper part of the background which is basically the sky and the buildings. I'll be making a tutorial soon about how to mask out complicated objects on Photoshop using this technique so stick around for that. Oops forgot about that guy. <laughs> Now it was time for the sky, and to be honest I hated the colors, but I did love the gradients, so I just changed the colors. Then I started to color match everything else in the photo using the sky as a reference. And finally the first object in the photo, this tree, I just basically matched the saturation and the colors on the tree, and then I did the same thing for the other tree. And then using this grass photo, I placed a black mask on top of it and then using a white brush in the shape of grass, I just painted over the parts I wanted the grass to be at. Or in? I think it's in, yeah. And then I added this leaf overlay with a black mask and then I painted over it with a white brush in the shape of leaves, basically just like the grass, to, um, to make, well, to make this, basically. Um, at this point, I'm not really, you know, sure about where I'm going with the photo. I'm just, you know, trying out different stuff to see what works best and what doesn't. And then I realized that the grass does actually look pretty good, so I just started adding more of it all over the place. And then I found this photo of a car which I thought it was perfect because it already looked beaten, you know. It looked old, it had the paint coming out, it was rusty. So I thought it was perfect for the post-apocalyptic picture like this. And I just added some shadows to make it blend even better with the, with the ground. To make it look like it's on the ground and not just floating around. <laughs> and then I added a shadow for the tree by just basically duplicating the tree shape and just adding a black layer on top of it. And at this point, I reckon the source of light or the sun would be on the left, so the shadows would have to be pointing to the right. I don't know why, I just thought it looked the best. And now it was time for more grass. And you'll notice here that the farther back I paint, the smaller the brush is, of course, to maintain the perspective of distance. Now I wanted to add some more shadows on the ground so I duplicated the building layers and I just aligned the arcs on the arc feet basically, on the base of the arcs so, um, so that I could do the shadows but then I realized that that was too much work and it wasn't working out right so I just used the pen tool to kind of paint out what the shape would be of the shadow and I just copied and pasted it to the other two arcs. And now since in my mind the sun was shining from the left, then I thought logically that the left building had to be the one casting shadows on the ground. And here I'm just, you know, just painting around different shadow shapes, just guessing. 
because I think in the end the human mind cannot really comprehend shadows at least three dimensionally so I don't think it really matters as long as it looks good and realistic. Then I added these shadows on the right building to give it more depth on the places where I would suppose the, the sun's not shining on. At this point I didn't like the original gravel road photo I used in the beginning so I just used this one instead which in my opinion was a lot better because it already had the you know the grass patches on the sides of it which makes it blend a lot better with the grass I manually painted beforehand. And talking about grass, time to add more grass. I found this really cool picture of a burnt down van which made my job a lot easier because I didn't have to spend time on overlays for the rustiness and the oldness, if you can put it that way. And well, just basically using a simple pen tool and the quick selection tool and some brush, I selected the van and then I color matched it and the saturation and the levels and everything was matched as well. I added some grass in front of it and some shadows as well to make it look like it's inside the grass and you know planted on the ground. And the same thing for the other objects on the photo and then I was too lazy to make a whole background for the end of the road there so I just added some trees and then I added a picture of a forest and that's pretty much it for that part. Um, I added some highlights in the trees using a leaf shaped brush. And I thought it looked good enough because, you know, adding a whole background or making a, an extension of the road towards the background was just useless because people weren't going to be able to see it anyway. It's, it, it's a very small portion of the photo. So I just covered it with trees and then with this sign and some other things later on in the video. From now on, it's just me adding different objects in the photo and using the same techniques to match the color, to match the saturation and the brightness levels. So I'll just give you a quick time lapse and I'll just shut up for now. <laughs> Enjoy. For this part, I added a back layer and with the with Photoshop's default lens flare renderer, I added the sun. I made the layer go into the screen blending mode so that all the black parts would disappear and then I added this orange highlight on top of that sun layer. So to basically accentuate the highlights on the photo, which well, makes it look a lot more realistic, like the sun is actually shining on those places intensely and that it's not just some random source of general light. And then once again I will leave you with a quick time lapse because it's me just adding more and more objects and more and more shadows and more and more color matching and stuff like that. Enjoy. Now to make the walls look a little bit more cracked and old I used these overlay textures and I also used these graffitis to basically paint the whole building to so make it more you know, post-apocalyptic basically. <laughs> to make the graffitis blend with the walls I changed their blending modes into either multiply, darken, sometimes even overlay or soft light. But in reality, you just have to play around with the different blending modes and see what works best for your picture. But in general, I think those are the ones that work the best. 
A very important tool I use to make the graffitis look even more realistic is the Blend Diff tool, which basically allows me to select how the graffiti blends into the bricks, depending on the bricks texture and the cracks and where the bricks join and the faded parts, etc. It's a very useful tool and you can access it by double clicking on the rightmost side of the title of the layer. So yeah, this is it for me. Um, the rest of the video is just me placing around more graffitis and more objects. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.